Hello friends, welcome to Insights Icon Initiative. First of all, congratulations to all the friends who qualified the CSC 2023. Okay, and I am wishing you all the best for 2024 aspirant. I am very happy to tell you that some of my personal students also who know uh, from you know the like last few years they cleared the exam. So I am little bit happy on this day. Of course, I am expecting that you as well you are going to have the same kind of success in the coming days and all the best for your future endeavors regarding the CSC and your state public service commission exam and the other national level exams also. In today's video we are going to discuss about that is a right to privacy for election candidate. So here we are discussing about not regarding the right to privacy of the individual. This is regarding the right to privacy of the candidates who are contesting in the election. We are discussing about that. Okay. So first as usually we look into the learning objectives what you are going to learn in this video first why it is in news that means context of the video then facts about the case and what is the meaning of right to privacy and what supreme court told regarding this right to privacy then representation of people act 1951 and according to the representation of people act 1951 what is the corrupt practice okay of course corrupt practice means there are various things okay which things come comes under corrupt practices whether a candidate's not disclosing his assets, which are not related to election, whether that comes under the corrupt practice or not, that is also we will discuss. Then Public Interest Foundation versus Union of India. What is the Supreme Court judgment in this particular case? And finally, what is the way forward? So these are the learning objectives of this particular case. Then syllabus mapping. This topic is related to Indian polity and governance. That is civil services, GS paper 2 and the context. You know, the context recently Supreme Court observed that candidate, whoever contesting in elections, he need not to disclose every piece of information which is not related to election. Okay, unless until it is substantially related to election, he need not to reveal all the information. Okay, the court ruled that candidate have the right to privacy from the voters and they cannot lay their life out threadbare for examination. That means he can't reveal everything. He can reveal only information related to elections. That is what Supreme Court, uh, you know, like observed. So here the fundamental thing is Supreme Court. Supreme Court is speaking about whom? Supreme Court is speaking about candidates who are contesting in elections. Actually, there was a case filed against one of the candidate. That the case is a right to voter. Okay, a right to voter. Voter has to know all the information related to candidate. And of course, initially the Gohati High Court, it given judgment in favor of that petitioner. That means judgment against the candidate. And the candidate appealed to the Supreme Court and Supreme Court given favorable judgment to candidate and Supreme Court observed that candidate need not to disclose, need not to disclose all the information, need not to disclose all the information. That is the very significant thing we have to remember here. Next. And this right to voter, he was claiming that candidates not revealing information, it amounts to corrupt practice. It amounts to corrupt practice under section 123 of Representation of People Act 1951. So again, Supreme Court while giving the judgment, Supreme Court clearly mentioned that corrupt practices under representation of 1951, it does not include that candidate not revealing information which is not related to election it is not amount to corrupt practices under article under representation of people act 1951 and regarding this we will also discuss about some of the supreme court previous judgment okay some of the supreme court previous judgment such as okay false affidavit false affidavit so what are the consequence and supreme court previous judgment regarding the candidates need to reveal candidates and their criminal profile or crime profile candidate has to you know like they have to publish whatever the cases they are facing that is also supreme court observations so these supreme court observations also we will discuss in this particular video now let's see first further information regarding this particular topic fact about the case supreme court was hearing a petition filed by mla this mla from arunachal pradesh he challenging the judgment of the Gauhati High Court. Gauhati High Court judgment that declared that his election is null and void, invalid because he did not declare some of three of his vehicles as his assets in the affidavit filed 
and in the form of apprehended to the conduction of election rules in 1961 okay according to conduction of election rules in 1961 every candidate every candidate have to file the affidavit in that affidavit they have to give the information and gauhati high court ruled that he did not reveal some information so his election is null and void he challenged the decision to the supreme court and supreme court mentioned that this election is not related to this information is not related to election so he need not to reveal he has a right to privacy also that means it overruled the judgment given by the gauhati high court and the petition okay i mean the person who challenged i mean who filed this case in gauhati high court he was arguing that the elector the electoral candidate committed a corrupt practice under section 123 of the representation of people act 1951 by not declaring the ownership of the vehicles so here supreme court observed that candidate's choice to retain his privacy on matters which are not concerned to the voters which are not concerned to the voters is valid and it did not it did not amount to corrupt practice under section 123 of the representation of 1951 and non disclosure it is not amount to not equal to to substantial nature of crime under section 36 class 4 of the 1951 act yes voters have all the right to know about the candidate information but uh, but at the same time we have to maintain the privacy of the candidates as well that means the balance between the voters right to know and the candidates right to privacy they have to be mentioned that is what supreme court observed here while observing this okay while observing the judgment supreme court also quoted about the representation of people 1951 and some corrupt practices in election here i would like to ask you one question that is after elections are concluded within how many days the candidates have to submit their election expenditure okay answer this question and within how many days political parties they have to file election expenditure with the election commission okay next right to privacy you all know that right to privacy recognized as one of the integral right of the right to life and liberty under article 21 and this was a supreme court observation in the ks puttaswamy versus union of india case 2017 in this supreme court observed that the right to privacy is protected under as a intrinsic part of the right to life and the personal liberty under article 21 and representation of people act 1951 according to this so supreme election commission of india can regulate the conduct of the election and this act also specifies some additional qualification and disqualification which are not mentioned in the constitution okay qualification and disqualification for membership in the parliament as well as assemblies it also provides certain provisions regarding the Uh, curbing of corrupt practices and other offences it laid down also procedures related to settling of doubts and disputes arising out of the election and section 36 class 4 of the representation of people act 1951 it is also mentioning that returning officer shall not reject any nomination paper on the grounds of defect that is not substantial character that means if that is not related to substantially not significantly impacting the election because of that information is not revealed okay his nomination cannot be rejected by the returning officer so this case is also related to that so in this case that arunachal pradesh mla whatever the information he did not disclose that is not substantially going to affect the election so that election cannot be called as null and void corrupt practices under representation of people act 1951 what are the corrupt practices such as bribery undue influence false information promotion of enmity among the groups and uh, requesting the votes on the grounds of the religion race caste community or language in abiram singh versus in abiram singh versus cd komachan case in this case supreme court ruled that candidates are prohibited from appealing for votes on the basis of religion and their own religion as well as the religion of the voters and based on these things candidates should not ask for the votes and undue influence is also prohibited undue influences means any direct or indirect influence it may include threats or it may be include by giving the money or gifts it includes all these things then disqualification section 123 class 4 it allows that disqualification of the candidates from office based on corrupt practices failure to declare election expenses or having interest in government contracts and all these things 
why we are discussing about this section 123 class 4 because now the petition is asking that that Arunachal Pradesh MLA should be disqualified based on this particular section there is a reason we are discussing about this section and the significance the significance of representation of people act 1951 what is the significance this act is allowing the smooth functioning of the election okay and it also prohibiting the entry of persons with criminal background into the representative body that is how it is trying to decriminalizing of indian politics still indian politics became so criminalized so tell me students what are the reasons behind criminalization of politics okay the act requires every candidate to declare his assets and liabilities so that accountability as well as transparency can be improved in election process it also prohibits this rp act 1951 also prohibits corrupt practices like bribery booth capturing and promoting enmity etc this act provides that only those political parties that are registered under section 29 a of representation of people act 1951 they are eligible to receive funds and they are eligible to contest in elections also because every political party mandatorily they have to register with election commission of india after that based on fulfilling certain conditions they will get the recognition whether recognition as a state party or national party it depends on the you know like whatever the qualification they achieved certain recommendations also related to this we have to discuss law commission in 244th report in 2014 on the electoral disqualification on the electoral disqualification and election commission in its 2016 report electoral reforms this both reports recommended that people who are convicted for false affidavits they should be punished at least minimum of two years of imprisonment as well as a disqualification you already know that if a person is convicted for two years or more then they will be disqualified from contesting in elections up to six years since they release from the jail okay that is what we have to remember and the trials for the false affidavit related cases also they must be fast tracked for the process special courts have to be organized and the persons charged for offenses by you know like uh, punishable by imprisonment for at least five years should be debarred from contesting in the election if the case is filed at least six months before the election in question okay so these are the recommendations submitted and in the public interest foundation versus union of india in this case supreme court mentioned that candidates whatever the criminal charges they are facing they have to publish those criminal charges at least three times before they are contesting in the elections so that people will know what kind of criminal charges they are facing and people will decide whether to vote for the candidate or not okay this is the conscience decision of the voters what is the way forward the increasing punishment for filing the affidavits wrong false affidavits and making it as a ground for disqualification it is a need to be implemented and the supreme court order to provide wide publicity of criminal records should also be strictly implemented and we should appreciate the supreme court balance act of privacy of the candidate as well as the right to information of the voters this is regarding the way forward yesterday's video question which decade has been designated as the united nation decade on biodiversity answer is 2011 to 2020 decade now today's video question today's video question is under the constitution a person shall be disqualified from being elected as a member of parliament so under which condition a person will be disqualified main question discuss the implication of the recent supreme court judgment on the right to privacy of election candidate regarding the disclosure of their assets what is the implication this is the main question as we reach to the end of this video it is time to revision in this video first we discussed about supreme court observation regarding the right to privacy of the candidates and supreme court observation related to representation of people act 1951 corrupt practices under right to i mean corrupt practices under rp act 1951 and what is the right to information regarding the voters some landmark judgments these are the details we covered in this particular video and this is a detailed analysis regarding the supreme court judgment regarding the right to privacy related to candidates who are contesting in elections i hope this video is useful to you thanks for watching this video have a great day jai hind